in more classic films. Lonnie rules. Nice. Oh. That's not good. That is not good at all. Oh, wait. Hang on. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, semi-permanent hair color. Red. Lonnie brought her hair dye over today. She said, I need to fix these roots. Think you could help? Dying hair is weirdly intimate. I don't know if I've touched someone else's scalp before. That's pretty intimate, right? It felt intimate. We looked in the mirror together after, and I expected her to say something about how it looked crappy, or good, or whatever. But that's when she said, You're so beautiful. And she was looking at me. Right in that moment, I wanted to say something. But I waited. And the moment was gone. Interesting. Well, obviously she's got feelings for Lonnie. Katie, Mum and Dad were going to make up the guest room for you to stay in over the summer, but you came home on such short notice that you weren't they weren't around to do it. You can use my room if you want, I won't be needing it anymore. That's a little suspicious. This is obviously the guest room. And she's right, it does need a little bit of work. <laughs> Hey Sam, you were asking about what I want to re I J J R O T C. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that means. Uh, here's a handy guide. Orienteering. This means the army thinks I can find my way around. Rifle team. The army has banded me as a certified killing machine. <laughs> Adventure training. I'm. Born adventurous and no borders can hold me. The army recognises this. So if you didn't think I was cool before, now you do. Lonnie. That was it. There was a picture of um, a woman in a picture, wasn't there? And it had... Um, she was in uniform. And it said DeSoto on the badge. That's Lonnie. Composition book. Samantha Greenbride. Ghost Hunter Journal. Sightings. Tall shadow in the upstairs hall. When I ran to the corner, no one was there. How tall was Uncle Oscar? Note I was not wearing my glasses. September 3rd. A faint voice coming from the bottom of the stairs. I said hello. Did not investigate. Probably was the furnace. 94. Uh, uh, September 9th. Poured milk from Carton in fridge. It was spoiled. Pretty sure I read that spirits can sour milk. Milk was just bought yesterday. Spooky. Lonnie says she feels a presence in the TV room. I suddenly begin to feel cold. We build a protective pillow fort. It's October 9th. We saw that pillow. Well, we saw them build a pillow. We saw a built pillow fort, didn't we? Lonnie and I employ Ouija board as a medium. Disturbing messages are conveyed from the other side. Oscar is definitely here. Enlisted Lonnie to stay up all night and help patrol premises, recording any signs of otherworldly presence. Lonnie reported many sightings, but all remain unconfirmed. Possible ectoplasm in the attic. Probably due to leaky roof. Sample taken just in case. Despite our best efforts, we both fell asleep around 4 a.m. All in all, a successful night. Well, they mentioned about the attic. Well, she tried to warn us about the attic and then decided it would be best just to say, don't touch anything. At all. Not looking forward to going in there. Ah, and we saw the book on watercolours. So I'm guessing this is her mum's... side of things. So, performance evaluation. Uh, she was supervising somebody. Said they were exemplary. Ranger Patamak has been indispensable during the course of prescribed burn preparation and execution. I believe his expertise and dedication has been the deciding factor in the success of a very complex and challenging conservation effort. In the opinion of the Flintlock Forest staff, Rick's contributions to daily operations have become essential to this outfit's continuing success. To this end, I will be formally submitting paperwork requesting his permanent reassignment to this facility. Halloween show! Don't forget your costume. So, 
Sometimes you just have to lie to mom and dad. Like when Lonnie asked me to see a band with her and stay over at her friend's place in the city after. That's a lie to mom and dad's situation. But it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just so loud and real and awesome. And everybody was moving together like one huge tide of sound. Between two songs, Lonnie leaned over and said, How do you like your first show? I was so happy. I felt tears starting in my eyes. And then she up and hugged me. I think she could tell. Interesting. Uh, whilst we were listening to that, uh, I did notice, you can't really see it very well, but these flowers have been here for a little while. The petals are starting to drop off a bit, and there's no... Uh, like petals on the paintings, that's a possible indication. What kind of music is this? Can't play too much, unfortunately, in case there's any... I don't think it'd be real music, but YouTube copyright has been the bane of many a YouTuber's existence. I'd rather not have to deal with that this early on. <laughs> uh, got some textbooks here. Healthy choices, skills for a healthful, healthful life. Healthful life. There's something wrong about the word healthful. Lonnie, holy crap, I was in the library. I noticed something in the corner and I found a secret passage. And it had Oscar's creepy old stuff in it. Oh my god, I've got to see this. We're skipping the sixth. So, in Mum and Dad's room through the closet, set of stairs to the library? Interesting. Turn the light on. Captain Allegra and the first mate. Your costume, my costume. Wow, they had a whole costume thing going on as well. Wonder what that was for. Sewing table. Wow, that's impressive. Can close it again? Apparently not. What's that on the floor? Oh, it's the... Uh, cassette tape for the cassette we found in the room next to us. Sam's dark room. Do not enter if red lights are on. Let's go and check out this other... That was the spare bedroom. That's Sam's room. This is Mum and Dad's room. And they said there was something in the back of the closet? Interesting. Ghost Hunters, Sam and Lonnie's secret house investigation log. Hidden compartments found in the library, upstairs hall and foyer. Evidence of the supernatural discovered, zero. The search continues. Okay, so there's one in the library. One opposite her room. And where's that one? That's the foyer, so... Oh, that's um, where the desk is. That's where the telephone is there, so that's where the desk is. They've all been added to the map as well. Crucifix. Oh, well that's lovely. <laughs> Let's go back up and read this, shall we? The God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Uh, let's put that somewhere where we know where it is. Hope there's no vampires. Well, that's that light done with. Interesting. 
So there's one around here. Private, do not read. Second combo scrap. Property of Sam, private. Half of Sam's locker combo added to the backpack. Oh, okay. How do we enter the backpack? Oh, it's under items. So, she's got her backpack. Oh, uh, sorry, her passport. Her boarding pass. Spare key that was under the old Christmas duck. And half of her... Locker combination. Heaven at the end of the world. Private, do not read. By Samantha in the ninth grade. It's a couple of years ago. And this is the name of the character that they had stories for. So, Allegra and her scarting... Scarting? <laughs> uh, Allegra and her scouting party peered down warily through the dense canopy of rustling leaves from their perch high in the forest's branches. Mere feet away, sunlight shone brightly off the inner ice walls of the glacial basin in which the forest grew. It was a strange sight indeed, such lushness ju juxtaposed with the frigid ice formations. Allegra leapt forward without hesitation, bounding through the high branches. The first mate had been captured by the Green Gracious Amazonian tribe. His life hung in the balance. We have to hurry! Allegra's party followed behind, moving quietly as a breeze through the greenery. Allegra landed in the clearing and shouted, Stop! She saw the Queen Amazonian, upon her pedestal, reaching for the lever that would drop her first mate into the vat below. She shouted, No! and flung her sabre at the Amazonian's reaching hand, but it was too late. The first mate screamed as he fell toward the water, then splashed down, and all was eerily silent. Allegra looked on, frozen in fear and remorse. She had been a moment too late. But then, from the vat, something began to emerge. A head of dark brown hair, just like the first mate's. Then the shoulders and sleeves of his coat soaking wet. As the figure stood and the water poured down, Allegra saw that the first mate had changed. He was no longer a man at all, in fact. What looked back at her were the eyes, the face, the hair and hands and body of a woman, still in the first mate's clothes. Still the first mate, he, she, spoke in a soft, clear voice. Captain? The Amazonian queen said, She is one of us now. She is ours. Allegra drew her magical flint pistols from her belt, and her crew readied their swords. Allegra glared into the queen's eyes and said, That's the love of my life, and you can't have her. It looks like even a couple of years ago, Sam was dealing with, um, oh, pop that down there. No, I feel better about that. Um, looks like she was dealing with, uh, some peculiarities. Some, something she probably didn't understand regarding her own sexuality. Kind of interesting to see that kind of unfold within notes and stories and things like that. Um... So, that's locked. We have found that one in the room beyond Dad's office. That's the library. There's a hidden place there. And there's one upstairs opposite Sam's room as well. So, let's go to Dad's office. i see if I can push the chair then. So I was looking around here, but oh, if only I looked in that corner there, it just something about the way this bookcase didn't go right up to the wall was a bit confusing, and I was looking behind it earlier. Um, let's take a look in this panel here. Show flyer for the Misfits. I think this is the band that they went. She snuck out to go and see. At Tot's brother's place after the show, there was only a futon to sleep on, so Lonnie and I shared it. The lights went out. I was turned toward her, my eyes started to adjust, and then I could see she was looking at me, too. In the dark, she smiled. 
My heart was beating so fast. I rolled over. I felt so, I don't know, nervous? After a minute, she put her arm around me and was so close and whispered in my ear, I really like you. I just nodded my head and I really hope she could tell. I really hope that she meant what I think she did. I felt like a shook up can of soda ever since. I hope we have the chance to talk before I explode. <laughs>